there's one or two things with the hardware acceleration. I'm not actually sure if these are going to work without any sort of GUI, but I can show you what I did when I got the uh, GUI up and running was to run a couple of cat commands. Um, I can't show you the GLX gears one, obviously, but you can type in GLX gears minus info. And as you saw on the first video, the first few lines will tell you whether you're using hardware acceleration. Um, I think if you type in GLX info, uh, is it GLX info minus B? Yeah, I think I showed that as well. That shows on within the first couple of lines or so um, that it actually says hardware acceleration. Yes, something like that if it is enabled. Um, but there's another thing you can do on the command line, which is to examine some of the virtual file system information in PROC device tree, SOC, firmware, KMS, um, that uh, hex number that's there, that's um, like the default one you want to look for, and then just type status and press N so you can see it says OK, so that does mean that that part of it is working. And there's another one you can look at also under PROC, device tree um, v3d bus this time so it's obviously a different part of the hardware and v3d again is a hex number that automatically comes up that's the correct one and again you can put status and again that says okay so as long as both of those say okay then you know you've got all of the hardware acceleration enabled and anything like MISA um, that will use hardware acceleration, it will pick up on that and, and make best use of it. Um, if you've got one or other of those just saying OK, then you haven't got it fully enabled. Um, and certainly if, if neither of them say OK, then you're using pure software rendering and that will just suck up CPU cycles. And in fact, I'm not sure if I did mention before I got um, hardware acceleration using the CPU was using something like 60 to 70 percent uh, with software rendering for the GLX gears so it's a substantial amount of CPU cycles can be saved um, by enabling the hardware um, as I've shown you uh, previously. That's Gen 2 on the Raspberry Pi. I'll just show you again with a 64-bit kernel, 64-bit system and you can see the the kernel is capable of running 32-bit or 64-bit so it's actually multi there but something I wasn't really sure about or at least it's capable of running 32-bit code uh, but it's natively 64-bit and also you'll see there the CPU is running at the overclocked mode which is the speed that it's been running at um, while I've been compiling, or at least it's it's had that opportunity to get that high. If you remember, I set the profile for the power, the frequency rather, to on demand, so it would have accelerated up to that speed as as the demand was put on the CPU. So yeah, um, and as you've seen, it's been perfectly stable. There's been no problems with it. Um, I guess the performance, as I say, of the GUI will improve over time. I guess the best performance will be available whenever the Raspberry Pi Foundation um, issue the kernel, a 64-bit kernel as a, a default kernel with the 64-bit capable Raspberry Pis. That could well be with the next release of the Raspberry Pi. I don't know when that will be. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, please click a thumbs up on any of my videos you found useful and subscribe to my channel to uh, see more videos in the future from me. Cheerio!